This is the apical four-chamber view of the cardiac ultrasound. So for this view, from the patient's short axis here, you can use your short axis view to help you obtain your apical four-chamber view. So here is the short axis view. And as we're coming down, if you think of the heart as a cylinder, the cylinder gets smaller as you get towards the apex. And you can see how the apex is getting, or the left ventricle is getting smaller and smaller as you reach the apex. And once you reach the area where it's the smallest, you tilt your probe down and you can get your apical four chamber view. I found that's the easiest way to look for the, pair, uh, to look for the apical four chamber view. You can also feel for the PMI and place your probe there. Um, especially for females if you can't use that, the approach that I just told you about. So here is a view of the apical four-chamber view. You can identify the left ventricle, the right ventricle, the left atrium, the right atrium, the mitral valve, and the tricuspid valve. And sometimes you'll get certain views that look a little bit different from that, and that really depends on your angle of your probe. So if I tilt my probe down towards this foot, you can see that that's actually what they call a coronary sinus view. You can see a coronary sinus coming to view there. As I tilt it more towards his head, it gives you the apical four-chamber view. And if I go even more towards his head superiorly, you'll see that you get the apical five-chamber view. And this is a more advanced view looking for cardiac output assessment. This view is good for looking at the comparison of the right ventricle to left ventricle especially in patients with pulmonary embolism when you want to see if the RV or the right ventricle has been dilated. And also you can see the sizes of the chambers of the atria to see if there's any dilation in the left or right atria.